Join me as we journey in this world where Pokemon and Ark Survival are mixed. Where we went from homeless to never homeless, from the trenches to the suburbs. I survived a hundred plus days in this world by myself through hard times and even times where I wanted to quit. But I stood tall and kept it pushing because that's what my mama taught me. And here I am to teach you the true ways of how to become an expert in this world. This is how I survived a hundred days in Power World. Before we do start though, from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. I've been working really hard for the past four months trying to produce the highest quality videos, and I'm glad to say that with this video, we're going to reach monetization. Oh my God, hey. you're so cool. <laughs> you're so cool. get this guy a Grammy. This is him. He's oh my him. God, He's how him. does he do it? I hope y'all understand that this is a big moment for me, and y'all are the ones who made this happen. I couldn't do this without you. Anyways, though, I hope you enjoy the video, and make sure to subscribe and leave a comment so it gets recommended to others. Thank you. And enjoy. It all started with day one, and I decided to name my world a certain type of name, you know. Not weird at all. I spawned in as a Discord mod, and I started climbing on walls. I was chilling when Jesus popped out of nowhere, and he did a whole backflip. I saw a lady, so I immediately swung at her. I slid back, but this time she had a whole shotgun, so I had to run away. Shortly after hitting her, the cops came, and I didn't know who it was. So we hit on a rock, and some feeling inside of me told me to jump. I tried explaining to the officers what happened, but they immediately shot me because of my skin color. I saw a polite chicken when I decided to punch it in his face. One, two! And then I threw my little bar. <laughs> When the sun started to dim down, I made a pickaxe and an axe and went to my technology tab and learned how to make wooden structures. And I unlocked my first fast travel point. It was pitch black outside, so I got some wood and built a little house for us. When my chicken decided to catch on fire, so I grabbed him and I launched him across the world. I built a little bed for me and learned how to make a crossbow. When my chicken suddenly started attacking this lamb and I went to it and I sliced its head off. Day two, the sun came up and my Discord mod was looking mighty fine. I gathered some resources and built a bow, which of course needed some arrows, so I built that too. And I saw this beautiful creature, so I pulled the bow back and shot him in the face. He shot a purple ball at me, but I waved it with my spectacular weed gang. And while fighting two of these, he decided to not be there. After getting him low enough health, I threw my first Pokeball at him and I ended up catching him. I went back to build some more arrows and decided to name the first creature I ever caught Little Pee Pee, aka Little Pesticular Pal. I found this weird rock and when I mined it, it gave me ore. ore. And also mined a blue rock which gave me palladium fragments. I saw this fire creature at night and I immediately pulled my bow back and shot him. He started shooting fireballs at me, but of course, you know, I'm like the air. The daydream that I caught started shooting him and he almost killed him, but I wanted to capture him. And once I captured him, yes. it was now day three. I turned off the face cam because there was no point in it. And I then started crafting a normal parachute. I cooked some baked berries when I then learned how to make Fox Park's harness, which allowed me to use them as a flamethrower. I gathered some more materials and started creating palsphere from the palladium fragment that I got. I shot the sheep in the back of his head and he started rolling at me. I had to do the right thing and put him down when he decided he wanted to roll away. But I just let it happen. I went back and acquired my pal spheres when I saw that my attributes could be leveled up. I went back outside and started shooting more pals that I saw so I could then capture them. And I captured this little penguin and started breakdancing. When I fired at the sheep, he decided to take my penguin for a trip. And he got stuck in a river so I used it to my advantage and captured him right there. I found another fast travel point which I was thankful for and I headed back to my base. I needed cloth to create a pal gear workbench. So I put my daydream to work and made him do it instead. As for a melee weapon, I created a stone spear so I could hit him from afar. My Discord mod started beatboxing, and I chopped some trees to build a little fort for my pals and make them stay right there. It was now nighttime, and I started putting down some pal beds so they wouldn't get stressed, and I gathered enough wood to finish the hut. I started constructing a repair bench, which would let me repair my tools, and I repaired my axe immediately from chopping all that wood. These two little lambs came running in to build this torch, and once they built it, the fox park came and lit it on fire. On day four, I changed fox park's name to Charmander and changed Daydream's name to Sleepy Hollow. I just named him Squirtle. My dude started spazzing, so I decided to walk in the fire. And I then made a feed box for my pals so they wouldn't get hungry. I finished the objectives needed to upgrade my base and it allowed more pals to work for me. I started naming all the sheep that I've caught test subject number one, two, three, four. And I learned how to make a berry plantation. 
As I placed the blueprint for the Power Gear workbench, all my test subjects started running in and immediately got to work. I made them craft me more arrows and built the berry foundation where I planted seeds and upgraded my base once more. I watered the seeds and then upgraded my attributes when I then learned the Malpaca saddle. I picked up the arrows, started making some cloth, and went to go explore a little bit more. I mined some palladium rocks and started shooting any creature I saw in my way because why are they in my way? I captured another frog spark when I then decided to kill every other one I saw. I walked to this green light and when I picked it up, it gave me limb funk effigy. I picked up the journal and went to another limb funk effigy. When I then went to the pal gear workbench, I made the fox park harness. I picked some more effigies up, captured more test subjects, and it was starting to get nighttime, so I started climbing up rocks. All the way up until I got home, I made some lamb bar kebab. I placed down a statue of power and went to bed. I woke up on day five, and my test subjects quickly got to building, because they knew what would happen if they didn't start building for me right away. Once built, I went to go pick up the Fox Park Harness and upgraded my base, so now I had six pals working for me. I was placing more beds down when I started getting raided by bandwagon fangirls. This big pink creature was trying to seduce me, but I decided to place all my pals down and started getting to work. Once they were all dead, there was one more, and I decided to go to her, and I started stabbing her in the ass. I decided to hit it from the back, and from doing that, it let me capture her. I went to the technology tab and learned how to make a logging site and a stone pit, and immediately got to work on my male packing saddle. I started baking some shrooms, and I finished the male packing saddle. I gathered more materials to create an alarm system, just in case they invaded again, and it was now time to try out the saddle. I got on the male packer, and it was faster than running, and it took less stamina. But when I did an attack, she went a little bit faster. I went to the girl that attacked me on day one, and I started spitting at her, cause that's what she deserved. And while I was AFK, the lamb started to rebel. He walked to me in a mysterious way, with a dark aura all over him. But I came back, and with the lift monk effigies that I got, I was able to increase my capture power, and use palsos to upgrade Sleepy Hollow's attack. It got nighttime, so of course, I hit the bed. On day six, I needed a crusher, a stone pit, and a log site. So I gathered up the resources necessary, and I built the log site. And I didn't realize, but it wasn't for me, it was for the pals. So I went to go mine some stone and started building the stone pit. The girl that tried to seduce me from before, I put to work. Cause when you work for me, you ain't working for free. And I ventured off to the grassy behemoth hills where I found my favorite Pokemon in this world. He just looks so squishy and he looked like a little piece of poo. He even flung poop at me. So I did everything in my power until I was able to capture him. I mined for more Paldium fragments and I found this nice open land that I think it would look good with a Walmart there and a highway and a bunch of buildings. I unlocked the fast travel near this tower and immediately went in and it was called the Rain Syndicate Tower. I ain't scared of nothing. So I went in there and faced my fear. As the black screen faded, the beautiful blue sky was strong and a girl was walking towards me thinking she was her. I finally saw her face and then she showed me her balls, <laughs> which she then threw at me. And from the fog appeared a yellow big creature that looked exactly like the one from Pokemon. And I was now facing Zoe and Grisbo. I died immediately. I spawned back in and my Discord mod was looking delicious. And I ran back to my loot, which the game puts outside of the tower that you died by, which is I'm very thankful for. As I rode this sheep, I found a camp and I sent out the seductive girl and she started going crazy with her sun abilities. And once all enemies were dead, I unlocked this fish looking pal called Dumud. I found a cute little penguin, so I stabbed him in the eyeball. But I only attacked them for a reason. That's the only way you can capture them. And we traveled throughout that night as I upgraded my attributes, unlocked fast travels, and collected more lift monk effigies. I ran back to the fast travel at Windswept Hills, cause the night was getting real scary. And I saw a purple light, and when I went to it, it was Evil Garfield. The seductive girl immediately started attacking her, and after fighting for a while, I tried capturing him twice, but he wouldn't budge. They say third time's a charm, but my dad never came back, so I didn't understand if this was gonna work. Surprisingly, it did, but I still don't understand why my dad is not. I got home, and I got a good night's sleep for day seven. I put Evil Garfield in my roster on day seven, and created the Crusher which allowed me to upgrade my base once more. I put Dumbid and others to work for me to get some rocks, get some rock hard. Evil Garfield decided he wanted to be a farmer. So while they did that, I made test subject number three, create me some more arrows. And then she started hitting this log, trying to get my attention. No means no. I already told her many times, but she won't listen, bro. I decided to pick her up and place her back down. <laughs> And I made little pinky make me some arrows as I want to go check on everybody I saw the test subject number five was stuck on the tree So I left them there and made some more pass fears. I found my first dungeon and I decided to enter 
I found the inkling from Mario. I, I don't know what his name is, but I found him and I captured him. It was all a bigger plan to put him in my prison. I found a <laughs> yo. I found a creature. <laughs> yo. I found a creature named a Fuller. <laughs> I found a creature named a Fuller that looks so cute to me. So I tried to get him so I could touch him later. As I ventured off into the cave, I found some thugs and I just walked past them until I found a chest. And when I opened it, it gave me nothing. Evil Garfield decided to attack another Fuller, and I watched as it brought me joy. And I was finally able to capture one Fuller. Nope. I saw the light, and as I climbed up the rock, I found a big tree. And I started getting hit, and then I got frozen in. I broke out my dick. Bro, no way, no way, no way. I no died. Way. Oh my. My Discord mod of a character went back and got all his loot. Let's turn to the dungeon again, and I found this thick monkey. But I decided to grab Charmander, and I started flamethrowing that flamethrower, 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 flame. I burned my enemies away till death. And I collected the two chests at the end of the dungeon. And off I went into the portal. After coming back to the real world, I decided to burn more people with Charmander, so I burn, burn, burn! I got real low on health, though, so I started trying to get away. And as I was trying to escape, I died one more time, bro. If you're on a ride, you cannot dodge at all. You're fried. I went back to my loot, picked it up, and found this weird-looking dragon that I think looked really cool. He killed my sheep with two tornadoes, and I ran for my life as I heard the thumbs behind me. Run! Ah! And I found this dude that looked like Mega Man and Robin combined in the same thing. And as I was running away, he decided to cross map me. Like, what? I was losing my mind this day. I couldn't handle it no more. I climbed up the rocks through the night in the cold and found this little green leaf sheep. And it was my first easy capture. I was ready to kill it as soon as it came out, though. I went home and slept the pain away. On day eight, we started getting raided by these wolves and these little dinosaurs. And the Nightwing that I captured, he started going crazy with the tornadoes and flying by and vroom, vroom. This green dinosaur named Dinosum started killing me. So I was going to tell him to go have a three. When Nightwing suddenly hit him with a tornado and flew by and sent his ass flying. He was low enough to capture him now. So I threw my balls at him and I happily captured him. I went to the technology tab and I learned how to make a three shot boat and a primitive furnace. I built about four chests so I could put all my stuff in there and chop some trees to go and build my first furnace. Once the furnace was done, I found this girl on top of the roof and she started making weird sounds. I know she was a munch, but I started the production on the first ingots, which I then used Charmander to light it up and get me my thing. I finished building the house and then I decided to be Spider-Man up until I got stuck on the wood. I dismantled it to get off and built another berry plantation. I started touching on some Pokemon that night and went to bed. On day nine, Charmander was doing me the greatest, so I pumped up his attack and his hair. And I was on the path of making a dire howl saddle. Once the saddle finished and I didn't work on it at all, I got on him. He was the best thing that I rode on. My dinosaur was in this intense battle with the Daydream, but he used his tail whip and it missed. Luckily, it has more abilities, so it started going crazy up until the point where I tried to capture him. I found this weak ass cat and I just put him in my balls. I built a staircase all the way up to my base because it was a little difficult getting up there. And as we were trying to capture more pangolets, one of them decided to hit the mammoth. So he made his big ass sunball and shot it at us. I knew we couldn't handle that, so I ran away and decided to go murder some innocent fox parks. And throughout the night, murdered even more pangolets. I went to the base and built them a hot tub, but I decided to join in and help them. Went out of nowhere. They all just left me, bro. Like, what? This is your hot tub. I just went to bed, bro. I wasn't doing all that. On day 10, I woke up to Fuller working real hard. He was getting me that stone. And I went to the hot tub where this dumb dumb was just chilling in the tub, bro. I was ready to shoot him in the face. I upgraded my base and I can now have eight pals. And I realized Dinosum was good for getting wood, too. I finished building beds for the pals. And I finally unlocked the high quality workbench, metal pickaxe, and metal axe. I created my first set of nerves and I went AFK holding my axe like a cop. When all of a sudden these thugs started raiding us, but I hit him with a spear and he was no more. I went AFK again as they worked for me. And I started mining some more ore, which I used Charmander to burn up. I built my metal axe, the three-shot boat, and the metal pickaxe. On day 11, I woke up to some nice Lamar Jackson, and I went to the tower to beat him one more time. This time, I started shooting him with my three-shot boat, but he started messing up. Squirtle, I weaved his thunder attacks like nothing. Shot him in the face, and even used Charmander to light him up. And he started jumping at me, but I didn't know that move. So, of course, I dodged wrong, and I got hit. I was getting real close to death as he attacked me over and over, but I started stabbing him again, and there he went jumping like a frog again. And this time, he got me. I was so disappointed in myself. I was ready to pull out my Glock knife. My Discord mod ran back to the loot, picked it up, 
and forced my test subjects to make me 339 arrows. I stayed AFK throughout the whole day and they were still not done. On day 12, they still weren't done. I went to the gym in real life. I ate a meal. I showered, brushed my teeth, all of this, and they were still not done. On day 13, the arrows were fully made, and I didn't know, but I started starving. Starving all the way until I had one health. And luckily, it stayed at one health, and I didn't die. But when I came back, I saw my pals were stuck on the tree, and the materials on the ground were glitching i fed myself and i started regenerating and as i was walking to this monkey he decided to get in the hot tub with a smiley face like hey you think life easy bro come on i just went to bed i couldn't believe my eyes on day 14 i headed back to that tower because mama told me that i'm not a loser sometimes he started killing most of my pals but it was that time when i finally learned how to dodge his jump i picked up charmander and i started shooting him with waves of fire that he didn't expect it at all and I used Trimander until he burnt to a crisp. Oh and I made sure he was dead, even his dead body burnt. It made me leave the tower and I unlocked the fast travel and that was one out of five towers completed. From beating a boss you get ancient technology points and I used it to learn the incubator, a small feedback and a grappling gun. And I also learned the little monkey's assault rifle which I quickly went back to the house and I started making. I went back to the open land that would look good with a big ass Walmart on it. And of course, just like we humans do, I started civilizing right away. Chopped down trees, all that. Until I finally made the perfect layout for this house. And trust me, I stayed there until nighttime working on it. Over and over, and I put some torches down so it wouldn't get too dark for me. I tried placing down the pal box, but it said that I couldn't build any more bases. I had to increase the level of it so I could have multiple bases. So I had to dismantle the old one. And here I went with the new one. I built it, I put the Pokemon I wanted with me, and I returned to the old house to pick up the materials and transfer them all the way over here. On day 15, I woke up to some nice morning wood, <laughs> and I put the blueprint down for a feed box and made my test subjects build it. After continuing to expand my base, I started building a hut just like the last one for my Pokemon and added some stairs so even the big boys could get up there. And the house was starting to come along just nicely. As I placed the final pieces, the sun started to dim down. So I built the necessary items for them to work and survive and finished day 15 by placing down beds and a hot tub. On day 16, I started by making berry plantations and I put the crusher down too. I found a creature named the Ashadir and I shot him just enough while he was attacking us with sun attacks to the point where I was bobbing and weaving and he was finally low enough so I could capture. And I now had the Ashadir. I went to go check on the workers and I saw my monkey planting a seed. So I decided to help him too. When Dum Dum came and started squirting everywhere, I grabbed the monkey and threw him at the logging site. And he got straight to work. The house was coming down pretty nice. And on each side of the wall, I started placing down benches that were useful to me. I found a pingy, and in the most intense battle, it was water versus fire. But of course, fire beats water. Do not fact check this. I placed down a primitive furnace, built a repair bench, and went to bed. On day 17, the Pokemon house was fully finished, and I put a hanging trap down just for the future. I continued building the house, and I checked on the stone pit chest, and I saw that they were bringing me a lot of rocks. I built a chest upstairs, and shot a Nightwing. The Nightwing shot a gust of wind at me, and my Pokemon didn't like that, so they started flinging their poop, 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 ice, 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 pop, pop, fire, <laughs> And after a combination of multiple attacks, the Nightwing was no more. It was finally time to change out of this weak armor, so I made Pelt's armor. And as I got naked, I saw my sexy body one more time before I put on this new awesome armor. Yes, sir. I learned how to make a crossbow, a metal spear, and the saddle. I found this creature that looked like the pool one, but with fur. And I set my monkey with his AK, and like 6 9 said, he went, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> After a night of killing innocent creatures, I hit the bear. On day 18, I found this one rock that would keep on respawning that had ore in it. And I got to smelting right away, build some nerves, and I looked at my hanging trap and I saw that I caught someone. Oh, the things I was gonna do to it. I pulled back my boat and I shot him in the face. When his family member came running through and he saw what I just did to him, I couldn't let him run, so I had to finish him too. Another night wing attacked me with a gust of wind and ice, ice, fire, tornado. And bah, 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 bah. They flung the poop at him. Fire, flamethrower. <laughs> Uh, tail whip and then my sheep started break dancing so i picked them up and put them to work on my crossbow and go bad on day 19 i finally finished the walls for upstairs and i built three more chests because it doesn't matter if you're messy if you're in the area of the pal box it's all in your inventory i built an egg incubator and finished the final pieces for the roof of the house it got nighttime, so i built a chimney for my fabulous house 
and started incubating my first egg, a large dark egg. On day 20, I got to making my middle spear and I created the Ajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajaj
I went on a tan Z spree of catching and killing and made a Nightwing saddle. And when it was time to try it, it was slow. The Ashkoshka deer was definitely faster than this. I went to the Power Essence condenser and I used all the Tansies to create an even powerful Tansy. He now had one star. Mm -hmm. I unlocked the fast travel at the Desolate Church and went home to Evil Garfield working on the farm. I shot this monkey and we started getting attacked by some lizards and an incineroar looking type creature. As he was weakened, I threw my ball at him and I caught incineram. This lizard called Lee's Punk was stuck in a rock so I decided to capture him and set him free. And then I killed his brothers. I unlocked Pengolet's rocket launcher and hit the bear. On day 26, the base was looking so fine. My creatures were working and everything. I started building sandbags for protection and named my Tansy with one star, Monkey. I incubated a Pokemon called Elizabeth and I put another egg to incubate when it was just a little cold. So I placed a campfire and it was still a little cold. And then I placed another campfire and it was still a little bit cold. And then I placed another campfire and it was still a little cold. And I placed another campfire and it was still a little bit cold. And I placed another campfire and it was still a little bit cold. And I placed another campfire and it was still a little bit cold. And then Panking decided to run around like a dumb. And after all these campfires, and the egg was still cold, I just decided to go to bed. On day 27, I went to the tower and tried to beat it once more. He electrocuted my panking, but my panking froze him and I shot him in the face with my crossbow. I got electrocuted and I got stunned and Grisbo started hitting that jump again, but I weaved it and I shot him in the face. My King Paka jumped and he does a bunch of damage. And when he was finally low enough health, my King Paka jumped one more time and he stomped on him. Just for that, I decided to rename King Paka to Red Pajama. Llama Llama Red. I entered Pen King's dungeon one more time and I used my pingy's rocket launcher and I blew everything up. He did die though. After a whole fight and me almost dying, King Pocket got him stuck on a ledge and I used it to capture him again. I went back to the base just to find Queso chilling in the hot tub. Like, Queso, get the. I started building a bar for my Pokemon and Penguin decided he wanted to be the bartender. The egg was still a little bit cold, so I had to climb around the wall to get to my bed. On day 28, I woke up on the roof and I decided to climb out before starting my day and I saw that Penguin was still serving drinks. I caught more pingies and used Llama Llama Red Pajama to kill Mel Paca. Up until the egg was finally ready to incubate and as I was disassembling the campfires, I disassembled the whole wooden foundation and it dropped the egg. I placed the egg down again and I had to wait another 40 minutes. Like what? I was so mad that I watched my Pokemon sleep. I got on my deer and I started killing more deers when he uppercutted me. We started getting raided by the bandwagon of fangirls. But this time all my Pokemon were ready. Thunder's attack, fire, jump. I shot him in the head with a crossbow. He got stuck with vines. I hit him again. They use the dark magic. I hit him again. And my panda hit him with electricity. And then they were all dead. I shot this Tansy with a crossbow and tried to capture him, but he said nah. I climbed up to this fast travel and I found this castle as I explored. And I ended day 29 by just unlocking fast travels. On day 30, I finally incubated the egg and I got bushy. I placed down the chest and as I turned around, all these monkeys were coming at me one by one with the dark auras again. I couldn't help it. <laughs> Luckily, I scared him off with my manhood and then they decided to turn around and I started crying again. Get away from me, get away from me. I started fighting this level 35 Mamoret when he decided to pull out a sunball. But Red Pajama jumped on him, shot him, jumped on him again and I had a 1.8. 89 chance percent of getting him. That wasn't gonna happen, so I used Penguin to kill him. And then I placed down the Tifit, and when I used its power, it healed me by 200 hair. I built a large toolbox so my Pokemon would work faster. And it was now day 31 when I saw that my deer was bullying these Depressos. So I shot him. I ended up capturing enough Tansies to make Monkey go to level 2 star. And I entered another dungeon where my red pajamas was going crazy. I picked them up, threw him, and I started shooting her in the head multiple times, arrow after arrow, until she had little to no health. And once I threw my ball at her, she decided she didn't want to come in, so I killed her. I went home, opened my door, and hit the bed. On day 32, I built a weapon workbench and unlocked the fast travel of the village. I didn't care what she had to say. And when I went to this house, I found a man in a blue coat. And I went to his catalog, and he was selling Pokemon. I found another person in a red coat and saw that he had a schematic for a witch hat. So I went home, and I made it right away. I was now a witch that looked like a bitch. Throughout that day, I collected more Lift Monk effigies all the way until it got pitch black, and I decided to visit this weird looking place. As I got closer, I saw a grizzbird on the floor, and it said that I was doing some criminal activity, but I was scared. So I waited until day 33 and flew back down. As I was flying around, I don't know why I was scared. There was nothing here. And I decided to fly to a never seen before island. Once I got there, I immediately unlocked the fast travel, and I found this camp where I threw down red pajama, and he jumped and stomped all of them. 
I knew he was the best one. I started fighting this boss and I shot her in the head multiple times while Red Pajama used his sun powers to attack her. He jumped on her and I weaved all of her thunder attacks and used everything in my power to set her on fire until she was finally stuck on a pillar and I took it to my advantage and I shot her in the head multiple times. I was barely doing damage so I had to throw down Red Pajama and then he accidentally got her unstuck. After fighting her for a while, Red Pajama jumped and ended her life. I went home that day and just, I went to bed. I was sleepy then. On day 34, I saw that my Pokemon were putting in that work with the food system. And as I was appreciating my house, this penguin started coming at me. I didn't know what to do. He started coming full speed. Help me. And then Dum Dum decided to take a bite out of me. I unlocked a couple of fast travels. And I saw this camp where all the thugs killed this mammoth. I knew not to deal with them. I was, that was not about to be me. On day 35, I collected more lift monk effigies and unlocked more fast travels. When I started getting closer to this wall and I started burning up, I'm pretty sure this was a volcano. I was dying due to the heat, but I went in and got the fast travel. As I explored, I found this enchanted tree with skill fruits under it. So I collected them and went to go fight another boss, which I used Charmander to set on fire. And I now captured Cremus. I unlocked the fast travel at March Island Church Ruins, and with the Lift Monk effigies that I collected, I used them to enhance my capture power. After that, I just decided to go be a poor sleepy monkey and use it to my advantage to capture him. On day 36, it was now time to craft a musket. I now had two sets of armor, one for the hot and one for the cold. I crafted arrows and gunpowder and immediately got to making ammo when the sheep decided to come behind me and teach me how to do it. I ended my night with collecting more Lift Monk effigies. On day 37, I went to go fight a boss, so I pulled out my musket and I shot him in the face. Red Pajama jumped at him, did damage, and I shot him once more as he flung poop at me. He shot balls of suns at me, but I weaved and I used my Pokeball to capture him. He escaped, but I quickly weaved and I threw another one. And I finally captured him. He was mine. I felt different, so I killed this monkey and I captured his brother. I found this wizard looking creature and I shot it, but it did no type of damage and he started messing up red pajama. So after a few more attacks, I decided this fight was not for us. And he ran away from us, we didn't run away from him. I found this weird rock and as I mined it, it gave me sulfur. I explored a bunch of the map with this slow bird, but it was getting the job done. And I went to the cold where I unlocked the fast travel right next to a tower. Of course I decided to go in. As she was walking with her long silky legs and looked deep into my soul, she pulled this grass looking creature out of the sky. And boy, did I want to touch that. And she started going crazy on the creature, but apparently she didn't like me. I ain't even doing nothing to her. She started calling me a misogynist and everything. And I was now fighting Lily and Lylene. I immediately shot Lily and she threw these water bubbles at me, but I weaved it and Red Pajama was already almost dead. She used this ground attack that put vines around me and it let me not dodge or do anything. Since I couldn't dodge, all I could do was run away. She threw tornadoes and I weaved them, but I still had the vines on me so she used this other move and I died. My Discord mod ran back to his loot, got it, and went to bed. On day 38, I found this nice place with a bunch of iron, so I decided to civilize it. I put my power box down and I put depressos to work when they started glitching all over the place. I don't know what's up with them. I threw them at the rocks, but they wouldn't work for me. I couldn't understand why. I started building a foundation and we started getting raided by a hungry, relaxed Saurus. I put my best Pokemon on the line and as I was about to shoot one in the head, my dire wolf decided to get in front of me. This thug tried to run up on me, so I popped him in the eye. And it was now time to kill the relaxed Saurus. I kept shooting him in the head with my musket that took 10 years to reload. But after he got closer, all my Pokemon started going crazy with different elemental attacks. I put my Pokemon away and saw that the mining two was the ones that I needed to mine the iron ore. I built chests in the stone base and I enhanced my capture power once more. I also started upgrading Red Pajama the most I could because he dealt the most damage. And I brought the stone from the other base to finish building this base, aka the concert the prison camp. It was nighttime, so I started placing down their beds. On day 39, I started building doors for the cells. I built two primitive furnaces so they could work inside and got to cooking a lot of ore. I finished building the roof for the first floor and I built some torches so it wouldn't be too dark in here. And the fox parks was going crazy with the ingots. I went to bed after a long day and I woke up to day 40 when I started creating this little hangout place for my Pokemon. I chopped some more trees down and made enough cells just for my Pokemon. I went AFK through the day and through the night. On day 41, I was still AFK, but when I came back, I saw that they could melt a bunch of ore. I built a feed box for my pals and put some berries in there, and sent Penguin to make me a couple of nails. 
We started getting raided by a bunch of thugs, but Red Pajama decided to jump and killed a bunch of them. All my Pokemon started going crazy with different elemental attacks, with poop being flung, fire, sun attacks, my boar dashing through the snow, and Red Pajama finished off the final ones. In my Pokemon's hangout place, I made a little bar, and I even became a bartender. When I then started getting my first few customers, a Depresso and a Dump Dunt, but he was too happy, so I told him no! I left for a while, and when I came back, I saw Penguin was the new bartender. He started doing things to the bar. It was about to get pregnant. And I added some stairs so the bigger ones could get up there easier and place a food box on top of the bar so it actually looked like they were eating. After I played bartender for a little bit more, I saw that it was actually working. They was coming in and ordering food, so I took his order. I made catchers make me medicine for my depressed Pokemons. And I saw a pink king that was on top of the roof. Like, what are you doing? I brought him down, and Kesor immediately fell back. Queso number two started going crazy. Like, like, that ass, he started spazzing. And it got nighttime, so I placed a blueprint for a large toolbox. And when I went outside, they were having their own little gathering. I think it was a cult or something, but I went to bed. On day 42, I built the stand and immediately made my Pokemon start working harder for me. As they mined and built the sandbags, I finished the roof for the second floor. And I went to the old base when I saw that they had a bunch of wood. Throughout that day, I finished it by building wooden defensive walls all over my base so they wouldn't escape. On day 43, I built a viewing cage. And I put a bunch of monkeys and penguins in there and they started having a gang war. I decided to just put a bunch of random ones of the same creature. And then I filled it up until my game would crash. And my frames were terrible. Oh my god. But I ended up taking them out and I put the sexiest Pokemon in the viewing cage. Yes, I'm talking about this one. This is the sexiest Pokemon. I filled my base with a bunch of penguins and they immediately got to work and put all the ore inside the chest. As I was checking that no one was sleeping, I found Queso in his bed, cooled up at night. But I just ended up closing the door for him because he was getting a good night's sleep. We started getting attacked by relaxed sources, but all my creatures started going crazy. Thunder attacks, thunder punches, ice, fire, gun, gun, poop, um, tornado, um, and I caught, and I tried to catch one. Yeah, and then my, oh yeah, punch, um, boar, boar attack. Yeah! <laughs> I finally threw a Pokeball and I caught my first Relaxaurus. His homie slid back though and they ended up killing with the ice attacks and a bunch of different elemental ones. And I ended the day with Lee Punk transporting items. On day 44, I saw that they were really eating and as I was chopping down more trees, we started getting raided in the home base. So I merely shot him in the head and then all my Pokemon got to work. They started shooting with electrical attacks and as they jumped at me, I shot more in the head up until my Pokemon made sure they were all dead. At nighttime, I found some random thugs, and I threw a Pokeball by accident, and it was actually starting to capture him. I just caught my first human. I hope you know what that means. On day 45, I found some more fox, and I captured him. I started bullying some tansies on my deer, and I found this little electric creature called the Jolthawk, which I beat enough just to capture. I fought this certain type of bird called the Van Worm, and he was low-key hitting me real bad, because when you reload this musket, it takes forever, and if you stop or dodge, it cancels immediately. But I got him low enough, and I threw my ball at him. I found a nice looking cow, so I shot him in the head, and, and I ended up finding a shore mineshaft. And as me and Trimander went to go explore, we found a boss in here, but it was pitch black, and I was dying. We got him half health, and Penguin started going crazy. But as I tried to put, it, put him back down, he was in front of my face, like what? I respawned, and surprisingly, I spawned it with all my loot. I actually didn't understand why I didn't lose any of my loot. I was genuinely confused. But so I, I just went to bed though, I wasn't playing. On day 46, I learned how to make my first makeshift handgun and the electric bear's grenade launcher. I spent all day trying to gather the materials for the makeshift handgun and I went to bed. On day 47, I made my first grappling gun and started making all my penguins make me that coarse ammo. I used the grappling gun to get on the roof and it was pretty good. I went back to the home base and I gathered a bunch of wood and did the same thing as day 46. I just made a bunch of ammo and I incubated this egg which gave me a Ragnarok. After incubating though, I just went to sleep. On day 48, I started creating a bunch of pal spheres because the best way to get XP was by capturing Pokemon. When all of a sudden, I see Fuddler carrying the egg. I put a bunch of ingots in my chest and make more gunpowder for my gun. And as I collected the pal spheres, we got raided by the Toko Toko Implode Unit. I started popping them with my makeshift handgun and it was now time to journey on another land. I went back to go fight the Godfins, but they started popping me with fire attacks, water attacks. I, I didn't understand, bro. I was at eight health. I decided to just run away. I wasn't gonna risk it. 
as I ran, they were still shooting me, bro. Like, get off. And then I saw this B grade in my head. And it was about a self-destruct or something on red pajama. So I brought him back and he started running to me. And he did one, two, three, one, two, three. And he did 99 million damage. His friend saw it and he started coming to me. So I shot him in the head and then he started self-destructing around me. I couldn't escape it. And boom, went the dynamite. I took out my anger by beating more sexy creatures, and this egg was a little bit cold, so I built more campfires. I woke up to a beautiful day on day 49, just to go right back to bed on day 49, because I was AFK the whole time. But the electric bear decided to pass by like a cartoon. On day 50, the deer in the back thought he was a majestic or something the way he was walking. And I used all the rocks to create Paldium fragments, which would let me be able to create more Pals Fuse. I made a King Paka saddle and I started riding him when suddenly we started getting attacked. And I used the jump to kill a bunch of thugs when suddenly Red Pajama was no more. I decided to just stay in the wall because they couldn't get in. And I went to bed. I started day 51 by killing an innocent Capri T and really just capturing more Pokemon for the XP. Look how much they gave me. 1,392. Each time I caught a Pokemon, the amount of XP would increase. So I kept doing it. I went to the technology tab and I learned how to make a sphere assembly line. And I captured another deer. On day 52, I started trying to collect tens of every animal to get the max amount of XP. And I used the baton to electrocute the Pokemon because when they were electrocuted, there was a higher chance of you capturing them. I started placing down fluffy pal beds to upgrade my base and I placed down the first sphere assembly line. And all my penguins immediately got to working. I just went to bed though. I woke up on day 53 and made some power spheres. And then I used red pajama to stomp all over these thugs. I jumped and I... Bah! I went home and I enhanced Red Pajama's hair. I equipped all the Jolt Hogs and I threw them one by one when I started slicing them and slice, 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 slice. And after murdering them all, I started shooting a floppy. On day 54, I created a big ball of sun power and I threw it at the thug. And then I went to go fight Bushy. As I shot him and Red Pajama jumped on him, we weaved his attack and then with one last gunshot and one last jump, he was dead. We went to this dungeon and started finding a creature named the Univolt. After getting him low enough, I threw my Pokeball at him and he got out. But I threw another one and finally captured him. I went to go gather some more XP by capturing more powers and repaired my makeshift handgun from using it so much. On day 55, we started getting raided by Incineroar and his lizards. When out of nowhere, I was about to get jumped, but Red Pajama jumped and stomped all of them. I captured the remaining lizards, and I didn't realize, but there was a fire spreading all over the wooden defensive walls. I didn't stop it fast enough, and the whole pal hangout place just burned to a crisp. Once it was all gone though, I just built the walls again. I started constructing the bar once more, and this time made it even nicer looking. I spent the whole day trying to recreate the bar that I made, and in the technology tab, I learned how to make a handgun, handgun ammo, and the metal structure set. I placed down a power generator to get the electricity guard and created 36 gigaspheres in the sphere assembly line. So I went to sleep. On day 56, Univolt was producing enough electricity for the power to start getting produced. I traveled back to the volcano, mined some more sulfur, created more gigaspheres, and I finally created my handgun. I equipped the handgun, and now I had a Glock 19 in my hands. Yes, sir. He thought everything was funny, so I pointed the gun. I made more ammo for my Glock and ended my night by collecting Lift Monk effigies and going to sleep. On day 57, I found this fire looking princess, so I shot her multiple times and caught a homicide. I started smelting more ingots and created more powdering fragments when I then incubated another dum dum. Univolt was begging for food, and I didn't know why he was eating, but I realized that the roofs that I placed under here were blocking him from eating. Once I removed it, he started feasting. I went to go check on Pingy, and he made me enough ammo. And after a whole day of keeping watch on the prison camp, Bushy was getting to work on that wood. On day 58, I created heat resistant metal armor. And I immediately got naked and looked at my sexy body of a Discord mod. I was him. Like, just look at me, bro. I had that Glock and everything. Like, I walked around hunting my next prey. And once I quit the armor, I looked like boss. Yes, yeah, sir. Just look at me, bro. Just look how happy I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went back to the volcano, and this time I wasn't burning up. So I used my Achacha deer, and I found a whole place of iron. I traveled around the volcano collecting lift monk effigies when I accidentally copped off by accident trying to collect it. But luckily, I landed on a safe spot. And some type of horse spotted me, and he started charging at me. I, I didn't want to fight that. As I was trying to make it to the fast travel point, he started shooting balls of flame at me. And I finally made the fast travel. I was safe now. I found another place with a bunch of ore, and I marked it down on the map just for future reference. 
I tried to go to the very top of the volcano. So I got on Nightwing and I started going to the top. Once he ran out of stamina, I used my grapple to climb up. It was not working. Like, I just kept on falling. Once I stood on the rock, I threw down my bird and I got on him. And then something terrible happened. No, no, no. No, I couldn't believe it. I, I was stuck once again. I, I was stuck inside the rock, bro. All I had everything on me. I, I couldn't believe it. I tried getting out so bad, but nothing was working. This happened to me one time before in my video of I survived 100 days in Lego Fortnite. But I fell through the floor. And it was now happening in this game. I tried everything to get out when I finally gave up and I accepted defeat. And then I flew to the top and I thought, wait, maybe I could hop out and I'll be unstuck. And once I hopped out, it worked. It worked. I wasn't stuck. I didn't lose all my things. I placed out my bird and I carefully got on him again when I decided to fly to the other side of the volcano. And then I suddenly caught on fire. I started dying fast and Nightwing started dying fast too. Once the fire went out, we kept on ascending and it was a huge lava pit, but I kept ascending until I reached the very top of the volcano. It was beautiful. I saw a big tree. I could see the whole world from here. That was my next goal. I wanted to go to that big tree. I flew to a tower and unlocked the fast travel first when I decided to enter it with no regrets. This dude thought he was him. He was stomping his foot and bobbing his head. When he finally showed me his balls and when he threw it up, this big dinosaur came out and he looked fire. This was like probably the best looking creature in the game. I was fighting Axel and Orsex. <laughs> As soon as I loaded in, I clicked the menu and immediately left the game. Now I'm playing. But Orsex ran to me and he let off a whole explosion of electricity. Luckily, I wasn't in the zone. He then started zapping me with a bolt of lightning and he killed Penguin. I started shooting him, but it wasn't doing anything. He had too much health. He made a staff of electricity and he threw it at me. And I was no more. I was so mad. I started shaking my screen. I spawned back in just to see how much of a disappointment I am. And then I ran back to the Brothers of Eternal Power Tower and got all my loot. Of course, I had to take my anger out. So I started killing innocent creatures and even capturing them for the prison camp. I went back to the fast travel point and I went to bed. On day 59, I got to making ingots and went to the moonless shore fast travel where I started shooting these birds off the sky. And his brothers saw me, so they descended and started shooting gusts of wind. And I ran, ran into this dungeon where I found this leaf creature. Me and Red Pajama double teamed there as I was vined and getting bubbles thrown at me. I started riding Red Pajama and jumped to weaken her when I then got off and I kept popping her in the head. She tried shooting me with bubbles, but luckily Red Pajama blocked it and then jumped at her and killed it. I shot this poor creature in the head, started killing some butterflies named Cinemas. When they then left me smelling like sh I just started popping these Pokemon in the head and even went to go fight that one creature from before that was stomping behind me. I learned a trick where I would pull back my Pokemon when they would start attacking him and he shot magical tornadoes to me. But luckily I was bobbing and weaving and I kept shooting him in the head. All throughout that night we were fighting when Red Pajamas sent him flying across the map. I used my only hypersphere to throw at her and luckily I was able to capture her. I threw Tiffin down and I healed 400 health and I ran back to the prison camp and not any other type of camp and I went to bed. On day 60, I was now able to create hyperspheres. I started putting everything in my chests and learned the high quality hot spring. In my home base, I made a little farm and it turns out this was a great way of making wool. You just put a llama there and they'll get you the wool. I also created a wheat farm, so I went to go pick up the flour and created even more paladin fragments because that was the most important thing. I went to the prison camp and made cement, which I needed for the production assembly line. And I was making sure I caught 10 of each Pokemon. I placed down the high quality hot spring and all my prisoners started working on it right away. It took a while though. Me and Pankin were chilling in the hot tub butt booty. I'm gonna shoot you. We built a statue of power and ended the night by enhancing my capture power. On day 61, I put these depressors to work, but they weren't working, so I aimed my gun at them. Butlers were getting to work. I went to the prison camp and made Ruby and Fox Park work on the primitive furnaces. And even the Achachach deers were good for getting wood. I placed down the sexy creature to work for us and he immediately started putting his seat all over. We started getting attacked by Captain Incineroar and his lizard friends. And once again, they killed my red pajama and ended me right after. I picked up my stuff and I went to go fight them once more, but I was no match for them. I left them there to die and went to go take out my anger on a nice jolt hug. When I came back to the base, I saw that everything was on fire, but I destroyed the ones on fire to stop it from spreading. On day 62, I placed down the blueprint and started making ammo at the production assembly line. I placed down penguins and worker, my best monkey, to work on it. I started popping some van worms up until I could capture it and even tried capturing these little stingray looking things. I saw some thugs, so I threw my monkey and he had stormtrooper aim. Like, bro, what are you hitting? Do something. As he was missing, the Mamoress threw a ball of sun and killed him. And I decided to pop the other one. We started fighting the Mamoress and I thought I was far enough, but he got me one more time. I traveled all the way to my loot and I then learned the production assembly line too. I killed some thugs and started fighting this water boss. 
After double teaming her with red pajama and weaving hits, I shot her in the face until she was low enough and I threw the Gigasphere at her with a capture rate of 69. Of course I was gonna catch her. Now return back to my prison camp. On day 63, I saw that all my ammo was ready, so I loaded my gun and made them work even harder. I had enough resources to create 200 ammo for my Glock Knights and found a better Pokemon that worked faster with the ingots. I learned how to make the Electric Bear's grenade launcher, but it was only a dream to craft it. I entered the dungeon and fought this beetle looking thing, and as he chased me around, he couldn't catch up to me. I was too fast for him, so I kept dodging back and shoot him in the head. My Electric Bear decided to put an electric punch in him and send him flying. He shot balls of rocks at me, but I weaved it, and then he started charging at me and he took him against the wall. I shot him in the head, but I was barely doing any damage. I threw my monkey down and made him shoot the AK, and he was dealing a bunch of damage. Like, he was doing a crazy amount. All the way to the end, he started shooting him, and then he started getting popped by grass bullets. And at the end, my worker monkey ended up killing him. I traveled through that night gathering chests, and it was now day 64. Everything was going great in this prison camp. They were all working, and even Penking ran all the way like a dump. We started getting ready by Dodo Birds, and he was about to explode, but, but he wasn't going to catch me. I decided to fly away. He started flying too! They fly too. I went and gathered all my loot and started colonizing to make a volcano base to grab all this iron. I built a chest right next to the power box so I could transfer things in and out, and now I had a whole system going up in here. Everything was going good. Production was efficient and all that. I went home after that long day, and it was now day 65. I started off by placing beds down so my pals wouldn't get stressed, and they got to work immediately. They was building this real quick, and I went to the home base where I saw that they were... They were actually bringing me a lot of stone and wood. I traveled the volcano ecosystem when I saw this Repletro. We fought him and he made meteors come out of the ground. But he was no match for me and Red Pajama. He threw rocks, but I shot him in the face. And we even weaved his flamethrower, but then I got stuck. I only had a 1% chance to capture him, but I threw it anyway with a hope in a dream. He escaped. I threw another one, 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 another one. And I finally got tired of it, so I just started popping him. I just killed him. I saw this fire and I went to go collect it. When out of nowhere, I just started getting on fire. I think the floor was glitched. I tried going as fast as I could to the loot because I didn't have no firearm anymore, so I was losing health. And with only a little bit of time left, I flew to my loot. I had no health left, but I saw my loot. I ran. I sprinted with sweat down my... I decided to make an extra set of heat armor, and this time I flew real careful down to my loot, and I picked it all back up. I spent the whole day trying to get my loot, so I just went to bed. On day 66, I built a metal chest, and I was allowed to store more things in there. I placed down the production assembly line, too. And all my workers came together to cut down the time. I went back to the prison camp and I disassembled the assembly lines and now placed them at the lava base. As soon as it was done, I started creating 15 hyperspheres. And I went to the home base and went to sleep. On day 67, I realized that the Ragnarok was the best one to smelt for the furnace. So I touched them and went to go acquire my hyperspheres. They had a capture power of 26. And now that I had enough, I went to go fight this evil lava beast one more time. I shot him in the face and I now had a 10% chance to capture him. And after many, many hyperspheres, many, many hyperspheres, <laughs> I I just had to kill him. <laughs> I learned how to make the saddle for the Azerobi, and I created even more powder and fragments. I went back home and went bad. On day 68, production was up. The charts were going up, and they were building everything really fast. I then entered a dungeon where I started fighting the Electro version of Relaxaurus. And after many shots to the head and weaving many bolts of electricity, I shot him in the head, and he didn't like that. So he started using a flamethrower, flamethrower, flamethrower. But I shot him again in the head, weaved his electricity, and I threw a hypersphere. Luckily, after three beeps, he was mine. When I came out of the dungeon, I killed all his children and ended the night by creating more hyperspheres. On day 69, Ragnarok was cooking ingots like nothing. And I made all my workers create more ammo, hyperspheres, and I went to go travel to beat more bosses. Monkey started using his AK to kill them. And then I found a camp where I found a brute and I used my Pokeball to see if I could capture him. But no luck in that, so I just killed him. I collected more effigies and unlocked fast travels. And then I went to go fight this boss that I used a tornado. And then I flew and I went, yeah. I then threw two sand tornadoes. And with those, I left them at 26 health. But I ended him with one last tornado. I ended the night 
by capturing more depressors to work for me. On day 70, I made more hyperspheres and I turned it to an actual prison camp. I made them mine their life away. That's all they had. I did make it more advanced. I put the right ones for the job and made sure the depressors were depressed while they worked there. It was now time to travel to the ice, so I fast traveled and went straight to the tower and I fought him. This time I used my relax source to kill it. And we were actually taking off a good amount of damage, but I was getting real low. He used a flamethrower. I weaved the leaves and tornado she threw at me and shot her in the head multiple times. She threw water bubbles at me and I dodged the digging moves that she had and kept on shooting her while he used the flamethrower. I only had 10 minutes to finish this fight. So after a whole seven minutes, I ended her. She was dead, she was no more. That's another tower down. Yes, sir. I unlocked the fast travel and that fight took the whole day. So when I got home, I went to bed. On day 71, I learned how to make an improved furnace, a refined metal axe, a refined metal pickaxe, and a refined metal spear. I went AFK the whole day as they worked their life away and I started smelting some ingots. On day 72, we started getting raided by a bunch of thugs, but I used monkey to, to pop them, and pop, 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 and then the boy went, and then, and then, Flame! And then I threw a red pajama and started shooting them in the face. Cause they was they was messing with the wrong dude. You know what I'm saying? Ba 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 ba. Bro, y'all probably think I got odds. They ran away though. And after that long fight, I put all the Pokemon that were incapacitated in the power box so they could regenerate. I placed down the improved furnace, and once we all got to work on it as a team, it was finally built. It let me smell refined ingots now. I went to the power box to upgrade it, and it said that I couldn't have no more pals working here. So I went to the settings, changed the max pals working at base option, just for me to add another pal to the base. I made them work harder so I could get more ammo for my Glock 19. I still had that dream of getting that grenade launcher for my electric bear. And I went to bed. On day 73, I entered this dungeon, but it was looking different. The layout was completely different. We found the boss, and I used Charmander to put him on fire and, 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 uh, and burn, 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 ice, burn, burn. <laughs> Yo, I promise you, there's nothing wrong with me. I got him weak enough, so I turned to Charmander and he finished them. I collected the two chests at the end and I found out that there's purple schematics for any type of armor. I was flying around and then I found Shoal Monster. I went in and it was that same creature that killed me and I died, but I didn't lose any of my loot. This time I was ready for it and my Electro Relaxaurus did so much damage to her because electric is better than water. Yeah. Hey, sorry, flamethrower, flamethrower, fl flame. <laughs> and once he was weak enough to seven health, I threw my hyper sphere at him. And after a whole three beeps, it was successful. I got him. I left the cave and I changed a few more settings because, bro, oh my God. This game, if you don't change some settings, you're going to be here for a while, dude. It's, it's not even funny. As I was exploring the volcano, I came across the one that I couldn't capture again. But this time I was ready. I shot him and I threw bubbles at him and water and water, water, flamethrower. <laughs> And as I was about to capture him, I accidentally killed him, bro. Like, come on. I just went to bed. On day 75, I went to go find another one. And I did. And this time, I came prepared. I was shooting him in the face. And then I threw my hypersphere at him. And now I had a bigger chance of capturing him. But he came out multiple times. And this was the one. I knew it was the one. And boom, I captured him. Yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. I was so happy and I put him to mine some ore. I learned how to make an ultra sphere, a sphere assembly line too, and a circuit board. I made the Azerobius saddle too, and when I threw her in the water to ride on her, I realized she was too deep. So I placed her in land, and then hopped in. Oh my god, it was perfect. She was swimming so fast. Now I'm playing, the physics for the water is so bad. Anyways though, I started making my way into the desert. And that's when I found a bunch of dodo birds, and then hear this amazing sound. Oh, I found this dig toys, which looked like a turtle from Mario, and then I captured him. As I captured more dig toes, <laughs> As I captured more dig toes, I found this dude walking in the in this desert like he owned the place, bro. I found a camp and released the Pokemon that was held, and I didn't even want to fight the thugs, so I just dipped. In deserts, it gets real cold, and I didn't have my ice armor with me, so I started freezing to death until I finally came across a fast travel. And I found a bird that was marching, and he had a little mustache, and he had his hand in his air. On day 76, I found out that dig toes was the best working miners. I went to my Pokedex, and I saw that Anubis is the one that I saw walking like he was here i climbed up this rock when i found pieces of black stone i didn't know what it was and they started attacking me but once they were dead i mined it and it gave me coal which is just what i needed this is where it was by the way if you want to you know yeah i found the sexiest pokemon alive and i started burning them to a crisp just so i could capture them and do things to them later i started making my first batch of refined ingots and i learned how to make the single shot rifle with rifle ammo i want to go craft it but where was the rifle bro i, I didn't see it. i only saw the ammo and that's it 
I destroyed the assembly line and built it up once again and the rifle was still not there. Bro, I was so angry that I watched them while they slept. And after pleasing myself, I went to sleep. On day 77, we started getting attacked by a batch of birds. So I put every Pokemon away and I tried putting my strongest Pokemon. But I started panicking and clicking and, and then I died. All my creatures started dying. All dead bodies. When I spawned in and they were gone, I saw nothing but dead bodies all over the ground. I walked amongst them like I was their king or something and found one thug by himself. So I decided to pop him. I went back to the lava base, aka the factory, and made more refined ingots. And I went to the village where I talked to the dude with the blue coat. And I started selling all my valuables that sold for an amount of 24400 I now had $53,000. I still couldn't get over where my single shot rifle was. And after searching it up, someone said that the picture wasn't the same as the technology tab. So I started making it and some ammo and traveled back to the desert just so I could create a new base there. But I had to dismantle another one. I had to make a right choice and I dismantled the prison base. I created the power box and put a refined metal chest. When out of nowhere, this dick toe started spinning and spinning, 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 spinning. I captured him and made him work for me. And I put all of them to work. Cause when, yeah, 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 work for me, work for me, back. On day 78, I made more power bits so they wouldn't get stressed. And I learned the Ragnarok saddle. I had two decisions. I could make the Ragnarok saddle or the grenade launch. I couldn't choose. I, I started going crazy. I kept on second guessing myself. But after a final decision, I decided to make the Ragnarok saddle. Once I made it, I threw down my Ragnarok. And after riding him, this was the fastest creature I rode yet. I went exploring in the desert, found effigies, and even found a place called Fisherman's Point, which was a whole village too. I collected the effigy and I talked to the man in the red coat who saw bones, which is really hard to get. So I just started buying. I just bought a bunch of I just I just bought it. I bought I bought a bunch of them, yeah! And then I encountered this dude with a green coat who was selling all sorts of hats. Now that I had a faster bird, I went and collected throughout the whole night lift monk effigies. Up until I came across this one creature with a blue light. He looked so fire. So I went to the fast travel point real quick, unlocked it, and we started fighting him. But he was throwing this sort of fireball, demonic, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And I shot him in the face and it took all of his health away. But then I switched to my Glock 19 and I started shooting him little by little so he wouldn't die completely. I threw my red balls at him and he escaped. But I threw it one more time and one, two, three. We got him. I was getting ready to go home, but I came across another one that was purely fire. So we started smacking him too. And I shot him multiple times and I bah, 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 bah. And then he made the ground shake and then lava and then <laughs> On day 79, we finally captured him after multiple tries. I used a bunch of Pokeballs, but I'm glad I got him. I started exploring the outskirts of the whole map so I could get a good design of what was happening. And then I came across a health bar. And when I looked at the creature with the health bar, it was a dragon from the future. I was so confused, but he was fast, bro. I didn't want to deal with that. He had 11,000 health and I was, hell no, nah, he was going to catch up to me. But I decided to shoot him. And he started coming at me. So I ran. I ran. I flew. I flew. Yeah, yeah. I flew. I got stuck. And he started shooting this thing at me that traced me. But I left. And it disappeared. And we were okay. It was now time to travel to this big tree that I've been wanting to go to for so long. But first, I headed to the sanctuary. And when I looked inside, it was a grass wumpo and a purple incineroar. I also found this red looking dragon and I started heading to the tree. This journey was taking so long, but I traveled through the water, through the heavy fog, through the rain, through, th through the everything. Yeah. And then I reached something that left me in shock. I reached a border, bro. Ain't no way I got a border. I couldn't go to the tree, bro. Y'all see this? And just so I could see better, it turned red as, as I got closer. And then I started freezing. I made all my way back and traveled the snowy mountains looking at notorious criminals. And then I unlocked the fast travel. After unlocking that, I made my way to an unknown island where I found a lady and I immediately killed her. After killing her, I unlocked the fast travel for that island too. And it was now nighttime, but I started collecting more lift monk effigies. I entered the dungeon and this beautiful dragon was sleeping. Of course, I slammed it and we started fighting it and he started flamethrower and I got him low enough just so I could capture her. Cause bro, who doesn't want this cute ass dragon? You know what I'm saying? I threw my hypersphere at it and I had a 90% capture rate. So there was no way I was not getting this creature. On day 80, I saw that this dick toes was off a perk and I upgraded red pajamas attack because he's been doing me work. I went to the Pokedex and I saw that it was number 111, Jetrogon. I went back to the Fisherman's Point and I unlocked how to make a Golden Crown and a Monarch's Crown. And then I sold him a bunch of stuff that added up to 37 bands. I immediately went home and made a Monarch's Crown. And once they started making it, 
it. I made a quivering saddle, which I wanted for the cute dragon. And I made a small metal box with a light inside so I could go to sleep, but he thought he was going to stay here. I opened the door for him so he could leave, and then I went to bed. On day 81, I woke up feeling good. I had multiple guns and all of this. I started riding the quivering, but it turns out she was just slow. She just looked cool though. And I followed my dream once more. And I could make the electric pandas <laughs> grenade launcher. I cooked more refined ingots. I was finally able to create his grenade launcher. I was so happy. So I went to go put it to the test. And I started shooting the memories in a explosion, explosion, RPG, RPG. <laughs> and me and Red Pajama fought through that night until we got him low enough. And when I threw my ball at him with a 19% chance, we were able to catch him. On day 82, I created the first large power bed, which allowed me to upgrade my base and I now had 17 powers. I went to the assembly line and I now made the refined metal axe and refined metal pickaxe, which were the top tier of the game. I had so much fun with the electric panda's grenade launcher, so I went to a camp and, and, then, and then boom! And then boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I started going crazy. <laughs> I went to go create more rifle ammo. And I realized that I should have made the hip lantern a long time ago. I thought it was like some dance, some some of the dance. Uh. <laughs> On day 83, I went straight to work and even made my factory workers create me a whole different assembly line. I watched over them as they work, so I know none of them would slip up. <laughs> and I found some thugs and I immediately got on my panda, electric panda, and then I put out my grenade launcher. And boom! And then boom, boom! <laughs> Bro, I can't get over this. My oh, bad. I, I went, boom, 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 Expl explosion. I fast traveled to go visit the snowy mountains and equip my ice armor. When I found EDP's law enforcement and they started blasting me from afar, so I had to fly away. Near this ice lake, there was this majestical creature. And I found another type of rock that gave me pure quartz. It was nighttime now, so I decided to go in a cave and camp it out for the night. When suddenly, I see blue flame and then my, my frame started messing up. And, and then, and then all you see as I'm running away is, 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 yeah, flame in the sky! Ice! 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 <laughs> Yo, I left the cave. On day 84, I decided to civilize a whole area with a bunch of pure quartz. I disassembled the main base with the farm and the berries and all that. And I now started creating a platform so I could let all my penguins roam free. I even let the bigger ice creatures out. I continued expanding it and even made my own little house inside this base. Once I opened the door, it was beautiful inside. And I finished that day by placing more power bits so they wouldn't get stressed. On day 85, I continued building their power beds. And I then let the quivering roam free. She was so majestic. Even though the sphere was pricey, I decided to make six ultra spheres. And I went back out to blow up some more thugs. So, boom, 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 boom. Uh, explosion, fire, fire, ex smoke, smoke, uh, gray smoke, uh, gray smoke, uh, boom, 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 boom. And I went to sleep feeling like the king of the world. On day 86, I made all my penguins build another bar and placed the food box inside a bar so it would look like they're actually eating. And surprisingly, it worked. I put a sandbag down with a crossbow inside and trained one penguin how to use it. I went back to the factory to acquire all the polymer and the nails that I made. And when I entered my house, I found Dum Dum in here. It had to be a dream, so I went to sleep. On day 87, I knew it was time to go get Jetrogon. I fast traveled there and I made my way up the scary stairs. And I finally saw him. I put speed away and not sped. That doesn't say sped. And, and I threw my water creature. We started attacking it, and then the Jetragon decided to make a fireball made out of the sun and shoot it at us, which took away all my health and left me on fire to rot. That was the end of me. I journeyed all my way back to pick up my loot, and I made my way up a big wall just to see a castle on the other side. I was traversing around the castle when I realized that there was more castle down below in the cliff. I tried to gather the fruit from the enchanted tree and they started shooting me with a flamethrower. As I flew above them, they started feeling suicidal or something and they all jumped. They all jumped, no, don't jump, no. And when I went down, it was a triple suicide. I saw a group of cult members and I pulled out the electro panda and boom, 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 boom. And as I was unlocking a fast travel, another group of cult members decided to pull up on me. Explosion! Fire! 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 Expl explosion! And more explosion! And, and fires! I went back to the frost base to see all my beautiful creatures working. And I ended up spending the night in the factory. On day 88, I needed more flame organs. So I started shooting every innocent fire creature that I saw. I had no regrets and my heart was cold. I went back to the base that I abandoned because we needed more food. Me and my Pokemon didn't have no type of food and I was starving so much that I stayed at one health. Luckily, I found 4,000 berries. I went to the frost base and added them all in and I saw that I needed to farm more high quality power oil to create polymer. On day 89, as my Pokemon were working, we got raided by the Free Power Alliance extremists. When I saw them pulling up, I pulled the electric bell and boom, 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 
Boom! Boom! Explosion! Fire! Fire! Tornado! Fire! Fire! I saw some innocent creatures, so I exploded them too! And I went back to the factory where I put all my stuff in the chest to go capture a boss. Yes, you heard me right. For this glitch, you were able to catch bosses. So I hit the police officer and fast traveled all the way to the rain syndicate tower, where I needed one of the guards to shoot Grisbo and he would stay still in a frozen glitch. Once he gets shot and he freezes, you pull out your Pokeball and you throw it at him and you immediately capture him. You now had an OP Pokemon, and right after, you have to respawn so you can get out of the tower. I went to the menu and started changing more settings, when I found a pile of Dodo Bridge and BOOM! EXPLOSION! And FIRE! And really, I just spent that whole day jumping, shooting rockets, and capturing more pals to get more XP. I went home, I went bed. On day 90, I learned how to make Grizzbolt's minigun and learned how to make refined metal armor, both cold and hot. I shot this dick toes in the face and I tried to capture him when all of a sudden all my Pokemon decided to join in and fire, water, explosion, charging, tornado. But honestly, they were the best way to get high quality power oil. I looked at the ingredients needed to make Grizzbolt's minigun and then I created a large metal chest. I went to go gather some more high quality power oil by grabbing Charmander and fire, fire, fire! And I learned how to make a pump shotgun with a production assembly line too. I started creating circuit boards and went to bed. On day 91, I put the blueprint down for the production assembly line too and upgraded my base so now I had 19 Pokemon. In the settings, I changed the power appearance rate to be 3 and now there was 3 of newbies. Luckily, I had Grizzbolt so I pulled out his minigun and started blasting. Brr, brr, brr. A uh, machine gun, minigun, minigun, bruh. And then he jumped at me and he killed me. When I grabbed my loot once again, Anubis jumped and I pulled back the Electro Wizard. But he started charging me and then he hit me. I shot him in the face because I couldn't let that slide. But then he jumped all the way towards me. I weaved that jump and Red Pajama started going crazy with the water. He created a ball of sun and hit me, but Red Pajama stopped it with the pyramid. As he was running to me to finish me off, and with the water spiral, he's water. I kept shooting Anubis in the face and he decided to charge me, but this time it was fatal. When I spawned, I hit Anubis so he wouldn't lose his health progress and ran all the way to my loot until we decided to jump from another galaxy. I got on my loot, shot him in the face, and he decided to charge me once more. I flew back to my loot and I saw that he still had the same amount of health. Of course, I went straight to shooting him while Griswold kept him distracted with his laser attacks. Griswold ran at him and then I headshot him and Anubis was no more. I started spraying a bunch of people and animals with the Griswold's minigun, but it was kind of weak. I put it away and brought out Electro Panda where I went boom! 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 Explosion! Fire! 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 More fire! And all of a sudden, I got hit by a ground attack and I went flying to the sky. In reality though, they just gave me an advantage. I went boom! Boom! And as I was trying to fight, I died in my own base. We killed the last one and we thought the war was over. When all of a sudden, an explosion popped out of the ground, I popped him in the face and went to bed. On day 92, I learned how to make an electric furnace and legendary spheres. I traveled back to the fisherman's point and talked to the dude in the red coat. Where I then bought 287 high quality power oil. It only costed a little though, not 86,000. And in the factory, I made them make the furnace. I ordered them to create me the pump action shotgun. And I went back to the old base where I kind of felt broke and started looking through all the chests to see what I could fire. I went back to the factory and hit the bed. On day 93, with the new furnace, I could make POW ingots. And so I started cooking. I made a ton more circuit boards and even bullied some more thugs with Grisbolt's minigun. I leveled up enough to learn how to make the assault rifle and assault rifle ammo. And now it was my duty to make this gun come alive. I created carbon fiber and mined some more coal with my new metal pickaxe, which gave me a lot. And I now started the production for the assault rifle. I went to bed and on day 94, we built a new sphere assembly line, which allowed me to create legendary spheres. So I went to go make more cement, some more assault rifle ammo, and popped this B guard when her friends started coming at me. I knew what happened last time, so I popped her in the head and threw a pokeball. But no, nothing was working. I, I tried to run away, but I couldn't. I exploded. Luckily, this one didn't kill me. His friend rushed me and I threw a Pokeball. And luckily, I was able to capture him. And that's when I started finding Queen B, Elizabeth. I bullied some more thugs with Grisbold's minigun, because that's really what it was good for, nothing else. And I now use my new assault rifle to go pop innocent rubies and try and capture them. I learned how to make the heat resistant power metal armor. And when you go capture more pals for more XP. I saw this was sleeping, so I popped it. And I now learned how to make the rocket launcher and rocket ammo. I went to bed, and on day 95, I made a bunch of assault rifle ammo and a bunch of cement. When in my coal mine base, we started getting raided. I heard of ferocious flying pals. As they came on us, my frames started dropping and we started attacking and it was a whole war. It was a battlefield. Fire, ice, tornado. But nothing was going my way. Everybody died. I spawned back at the base and I immediately died to tornadoes. I spawned back one more time 
And they started attacking me one more time, bro. What the fuck? I ran away as the rough sand flourished between my toes. And as I ran back to my loot, I was dying from how hard it was. <laughs> and I died right next to my loot. I spawned back and saw that all my pals were dead. All my workers. They weren't fighters. They were just workers. I looked around in disappointment and put all of them to rest in my power box. Instead though, I filled it up with a bunch of sexy creatures and had a sexy party. When all of a sudden, Dick Toe started attacking us. But then he decided to pull out some Naruto's, I don't know, some anime thing, some anime move. And they started flinging their poop at them. And and, and, and the, the big sexy creature decided to throw leaves at him. And poop, and poop, 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 more poop. When finally, Dick Toe's life was ended by the final move of the sexy big creature. I went to the factory and created my first batch of legendary spheres. When I saw this cute little ribbon, it made me, oh my baby, oh my baby, oh my baby. And created as much as possible power fragments that I could. I went to bed. On day 96, I learned how to make the best armor for cold. I started creating the best armor for hot. I smelted more power metal ingots. And it was now time to put on the new armor. It looked beautiful, beautiful. I was standing there like the king, the Burger King. And I tired myself off by mining pure quartz, which I then hit the bed. On day 97, I stayed AFK, and come nighttime, this chicken started walking at me ferociously. I didn't know what was going to happen. Oh, oh he, he was just walking past me. Okay, we're good. And really, I just stayed AFK through that whole night, too. On day 98, I made another batch of legendary spheres and made another electric furnace to speed up process. I made a sword and put all the sexy creatures away so they wouldn't get hurt. On day 99, I was furious. I made all my pals work as hard as they could in every production they could with no breaks. And I maintained this rule throughout the whole day. After a good day's work, my bed looked so comfortable. So I laid down and I dozed off county sheep. It was day 100. We finally made it. And it was time to go fight the Jetragon! I seen him and I started shooting him with my AK-47. And this was the most intense battle of my life. Fire tornadoes here. Meteors after meteors after meteors were getting thrown at me. And he decided to run up on me. But luckily, I weaved. And I started shooting him in the face with the AK. When he started fireballing me and I weaved. He was so fast, he pushed Red Pajama all the way to the other side of the map. So I put him back in the Pokeball, sent him back out, and this when he sent two fire tornadoes at me. But luckily, I was out of the way. And Red Pajama started hitting him with the anime water attack. After a good fight and barely taking away any health, Red Pajama was dead. I threw down the electric panda, and as I weaved his purple flamethrower, he went in for the punch, and he punched him in the face. He made a ball of sun, but luckily, I got right out the way, and my electric panda decided to blow up the whole place. I emptied my clip into his face, and I ran out of ammo, so I pulled out my shoddy, and I started pumping him in the face. Pump after pump after pump. It was now Griswold's time to attack, and Griswold held him with the electricity as I shot him in the face time after time when he started throwing meteors at me, but I weaved it out the way, and Griswold started jumping in the air with the electric attacks. He threw tornadoes, electric lightning, and I ran out of ammo for my shotgun, so I had to quit my Glock 19. Griswold kept on jumping at him, and Jetragon was now at half health. I shot him in the face with the Glock 19 when he used meteors, and Griswold started taking these hits because he had like 50,000 health. Griswold jumped at Jetragon, hitting him with a swipe, swipe, and a right hook. And they were having the most intense battle of their life. I ran out of ammo for all my guns, and I started swinging with my sword. Even though I wasn't hitting nothing, I still swung. And when I pulled Griswold away, Jetragon started speeding at me, so I, I, I threw him out, because hell not. And it was starting to become sundown, but Griswold hit him with the lightning charge, and he got hit with a sun ball back. But that didn't stop us. Meteor after meteor came after Griswold, but he was no loser. We fought through the night. I sent out Ragnarok, sending tornadoes, and Jetragon was now at small health. I threw my first legendary sphere, and after a long ding, I was able to capture Jetragon number 111. I went to the technology tab and learned Jetragon's missile launcher. I went to the factory and went straight to bed. On day 101, Jetragon was finally here. He was finally here. And I made a production assembly line too, where all my workers in this factory started working. I took Jetragon out for a walk and he started shooting balls of flame at dig toes. When we went to go face off against the three Anubis, they ran at me and I dodged in fear. When Anubis charged me, and somehow he hit me after I dodged. One of the Anubises ran after me, and I tried running away, but it wasn't working. I led them back to the base by accident, and everything was going downhill. All my pals were working at their maximum efficiency, and on the top right, all my pals were incapacitated. Luckily, this Anubis was stuck in a rock, so I took advantage of him and started touching him. With little to no health and one more Pokeball, I captured Anubis. There was still two more I had to take care of, and then he started hitting the sidestep. And once he was dead, I placed down my Anubis. I finally caught him. 
I put all my Pokemon back in the power box so they could regenerate. And I took Anubis out on a stroll. And Anubis went to go fight a Dictos, but he started weaving. And this was probably the most intense fight with dodges, rocks being thrown, and dashes. Dictos' friends started coming over Anubis. And Anubis jumped at him and ended him with one jump. Anubis was in a 1v3, but he decided to side sweep them. And then I took him out to kill more friendly creatures. He was in another 1v3, and with the jump again, he killed all of them. I went FK in my factory and didn't realize, but I had my cold armor equipped. So it started getting hot and I started losing health all the way up until I died. On day 102, I was T-posing and I didn't know how I died, but it was now time to make Jetragon's missile launcher. I had all the goodies ready to pick up and I sold all the heart from Pokemon that I killed for 30 bands. With the 30 bands, I decided to buy high quality power oil and mine more pure quartz to make even more circuit boards. After spending the night binding coal, I went to sleep. On day 103, I started upgrading Jetragon's abilities all the way to the max. And I now had the resources necessary to make Jetragon's missile launcher. Oh yeah, I immediately got to making this. I threw down Anubis and he was the fastest worker. So I stayed there throughout the day until I finally made it. I gave Anubis my regards and I changed Jetragon's name to Robocock. I took him out for the first fight and he was already faster. You see how fast is it, bro? I was zooming, I was... Plus, I forgot it was a missile launcher, so I immediately started firing onto random pals until they were fully dead with this airstrike. I flew around the world collecting effigies and used Grizzball's minigun one last time to kill a bunch of random people. No rushing. Nighttime was the best time to collect Lift Monk effigies, so I went out with Robocock and any green light that I saw, I would immediately go to. And it didn't matter because he was so fast. On day 104, I started off by fighting this water creature and I used Grizzball's minigun to pop him. Yeah, all the way until he had no health and I threw a legendary sphere at the creature. I was able to capture Jormantide and I started beating every area boss that I could, starting with this grass wumpo. I didn't take his life though, I just captured him. On the map, I saw that I haven't explored north, so with Robocock, I started flying across the water. And I ended up in the sand biome. And I went to this village called the Dune Shelter where I unlocked the fast travel. I saw another sanctuary, so I went straight to it. And when I looked in there, I started beating these random creatures up until I could catch them. This one hit me with a dark anime attack though. I don't know what it was. I captured the Astagon and it was time to fight some legendary creatures with my legendary creature. So Robocock missed immediately. But Necromus and Palladius started coming at me. Palladius froze me to the ground and Necromus came and hit me with a shockwave attack. I placed Jetragon down and he used his meteors to go when he started dashing at me, but luckily I weaved. Palladius released the Palladius re Palladius released Palladius released the sun's beam when out of nowhere Grizzball started getting jumped by both Palladius and Necromus. I didn't have no type of ammo, so I just had to watch throughout this whole fight. Luckily Grizzball started jumping at them and I tried to help, but as soon as Palladius turned around when I hit him, I decided to run away. Uh, it was nighttime and they were still fighting. I was getting Necromus down first up until he had little to no health and that's when I almost died trying to get greedy. Robocock hit him with a bunch of meteor attacks and I threw my ball at him. And after three dings, I was able to capture him. On day 105, I went to my base and I didn't kill the other one because he was too hard. I equipped Necromus though and he was looking magnificent. I learned to ask the gun saddle and realized I had no more skill points for another one. At the ice base, I started building a berry farm and I went back to fight Palladius and Necromus all the way until I got Palladius at no health and I threw my Pokeball at him. Palladius wouldn't budge and I was running out of spheres. He kept on coming out of each one and Grisbo was busy distracting Necromus. So I had to do this myself. The ball dinged and then he came right back out. I had two legendary spheres remaining and I couldn't bear to come back another time. He escaped the second to last one, and then I threw the last legendary sphere I had. I captured both of them. On day 106, we were still fighting, and we just decided to kill Necromis. When I went back to the base, and I took a break, cause oh my god, the amount of energy. On day 107, I just made a bunch of ammo and supplies, and I hit the bed. On day 108 to 112, I decided to go fight the tower boss, the final tower boss. So I started popping him and, and popping him with my minigun. And sadly, there was no audio in this because because my friend called me and I accidentally muted the game. But here was some clips of how I fought the tower bosses with, with maximum efficiency, with, with Robococks, fire missiles, and explosions. And as he ran to me, the tower boss killed me with his beams of sunlight. I got so mad that I threw out the human that I captured a long time ago. And I started slicing him and slicing him in front of everybody. I was trying to get a quick thumbnail and started looking at the best Pokemon I had. When out of nowhere, we started getting attacked by Wumpos, Snow Wumpos. They broke the base, they broke the power box, everything was going down. 
I didn't know what to do. My pal was frozen, and I only had Anubis by me. They kept breaking the base, and I couldn't believe it. Bro, I wanted to quit so bad. I had no way to spawn back, so I fought my hardest and shot him with the AK. I was doing no type of damage, though. I picked up the Pokemon spheres that were on the ground because they broke it, and I threw them out. When all of a sudden, it got too cold. It got too cold for me, and I died in the frost. I tried running back to the loot, but again, I froze as soon as I got it. I went to bed, and on day 113, I returned fully prepared with my frost armor. I lost Robocock, though. I didn't know where he was. He wasn't in my inventory or anything, so I was stressing. I was so ready to quit when I seen a sphere on the floor, and I was so happy I found him again. Little Peepy was in the back, and he started messing up Palladius. And I confirmed my theory about Anubis being the best hand worker. I went to go enhance my pal's power, and I upgraded Robocock to the max. He now had maximum attack efficiency with high quality, and he was now Burger King. Co CEO. But I still had to work, so I ended the day by mining some more. On day 114, I spent about 90 bands trying to get high quality power oil, and I saw that I could make a rocket launcher. I went exploring with Robocock and started going crazy with the missiles. Explosion! Explosion! Airstrike! AC 130! 13! Oh my god! Boom! People screaming, ah! And I went to bed. On day 115, I entered this volcano cave, and I went on my journey to beat every area boss possible. After beating him and leaving the dungeon, I spawned in the lava that started taking so much damage. I tried running out, and I started getting hit with a flamethrower. Like, bro, what's up? I got on Robocock, and as I flew away, I died. And my loot landed in the lava once again. Robocock died too, so I had to use Astogen to fly over there. He was slow, but he was getting the job done, and I lowered down to my loot and safely got it all back. I flew over the sky and admired how beautiful it was, and then I immediately made some more assault rifle ammo so I could civilize more places. I put Anubis to work and made more legendary spheres. My next goal was to kill Blazemut, so I went to sleep and I went to the ice tower where I was going to defeat the final boss. He was walking like he was him, but I immediately started popping him with an AK-47 and Robocock decided to go, and as he used his beam of sunlight, I dodged and dodged over and over, and I used my rocket launcher to hit him. Explosion! 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 Assault rifle! Assault Rifle even more! Dodge! Assault Rifle more! And when he was finally low health, he hit me with his beam of sunlight. And I ran out of Assault Rifle ammo. So I ran to him in slow motion. And as I jumped, I shot him in the head. I dodged his hits. And with one more headshot, he was gone. I defeated every tower boss in the game. I went to sleep. And on day 117, I looked at all the towers that I beat. From Rain Syndicate to the Tower of the Free Power Alliance. Tower of the Brothers of the Eternal Power. Towers of the PIDF. And finally, Tower of the POW Genetic Research Unit. My only goal now was to kill every area boss possible. So I lit off rockets everywhere and I killed him. I even went down to Ice Caves where I used my assault rifle and I used Blaze Howard to burn him to crisp. On day 118, I entered another mine shaft and I started killing all these bees with Robocock's rocket launcher everywhere. Boom, boom, explosion. explosion. And I finished killing every boss in here. I started climbing up the volcano when I slipped and I didn't have no more stamina to pull out my glider. So I hit the floor and splattered. I collected more Lift Monk effigies. I found one of the final bosses that I needed to kill. And this is where Astrogen is located, if you're wondering. And I sent in Robocop because he was guarding the entrance. But when I came back, I saw that he was dead. Robocop killed him. I started finding the last legend and the last area boss that I could find. And I shot her with the AK. And in this tense battle, she shot me with this frost. Frost, frost. But I got her down low enough and I threw my legendary sphere. And after three dings, it was over. It was over. I captured the legend. I went to the map and I saw that I killed every boss. I finished. It was now day 120 and the last day. And I started off by slicing some Dwarf Jolt Hawks. I shot him with the AK and I started touching him before I sliced him once more and slice and slice. And it was done. If you watched all the way to the end, I just want to say I really appreciate you. And I put more than 100 hours into this. So I really hope you enjoy it. Boy, look at me. We have done good in this world, but it is time to go. Bow down to me. Yes, master. Look at me when I'm talking to you! You're gonna respect me! Now drop your crown! And so, I dropped my crown. Little did anyone know that Little Pee Pee, aka Little Pesticular Pal, was the true villain of this story. And he was the true main boss and CEO of Burger King. The end.